for those of you who don't know, my name is Oiz Asmal and welcome to LinkedIn for Leaders. Your network is your net worth. Today I've been asked to talk about how to use LinkedIn effectively for personal and professional branding. And I'm going to break up the session into two halves. The first half is this little keynote discussion. And the second half, I want to take questions. So but remember that there's no such thing as a silly question. Uh, the, the great thing about questions is that uh, that's where I can get very specific to you. Or I can be very specific in a talk. I have to speak open and in general. But if you ask me a specific question, I can give you a specific answer. So when we get to the questions, please, please do ask your questions because then we can. That's where we can add a lot of value. So uh, let's get started. So you may ask, uh, why did they choose you always? Uh, let me give you a bit of a background. Um, I'm a chartered accountant with 14 years experience. Um, I went to, I, I'm based in Cape Town. I went to a disadvantaged school in the Cape Flats. Uh, if, we, if I go even further back, uh, my, my grandfather was a teller at Chickas. My father grew up in a tin house. I traveled to school every day in a minibus taxi uh, in varsity or to get to varsity. I was lucky enough to get a bursary to study at Stellenbosch. So I was one of the first few groups of, 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 of or, or bigger groups of people of color to get in. So that was a that was an interesting experience. Mostly good, but uh, as you know, Stellenbosch has an interesting experience. Um, I wasn't the greatest student. Uh, and the uh, reason being you try learning auditing in Afrikaans. It's not, it's not fine. <laughs> it's not fine. Uh, and I think in, in my third year, my June of my third year, I, I, I failed all my subjects. After that, I put my head down and I managed to pass my third year. But I didn't qualify for honors because, you know, there's always a higher level um, at, at Stellenbosch. So I did my honors through UNISA. Uh, so some of you, I mean, you are, you are, you are doing your honors at, 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 at fourth year, so you were already there. Um, I did my, I'm sure some of you are, 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 are signing for articles or planning, planning to sign for articles. I did my articles at, at KPMG in Cape Town, uh, where I worked in external audit, but uh, I've also got experience in internal audit, financial accounting, business development and operations. I worked for a, a JSC listed property company as the uh, assistant to the financial director for a few years. I worked as the chief operating officer for a boutique asset manager for a few years. And now I work as the head of advisory services at Outsource CFO. And we help startups and SMEs to grow and scale using the same financial techniques that you, uh, that you use at university. Uh, we we use, that, use those to, to help the, these small businesses. So I've, I've worked for large companies, I've worked for small companies and medium sized companies as well. So I've got a good experience across the, uh, across the board. And um, I, if you've got any questions, I'll take all of the questions at the end. So um, put a pin in it, maybe write it down or just you know, keep a note of it and, and we'll deal with all of it towards the end. But still you may ask, how does this little explanation that I gave you qualify me to talk to you today? And the answer is, uh, well, it doesn't. So let me get to the part uh, that, that it does. Let me talk to you a little bit about my LinkedIn journey. So um, I started sharing content on LinkedIn at the beginning of 2019. Before that, I mean, I had LinkedIn for many years, but people used to just use LinkedIn as a CV, place to put your CV, but they've updated it. And then I started uh, sharing content in 29, at the start of 2019. And when I start, and the only reason I started was, uh, I was looking for good South African content on LinkedIn. I kept finding Australians and I kept finding English people, but no South Africans. So none of their content resonate, resonated with me. I couldn't find any content that spoke to me. Now, understand that before I, I had done this, I had no experience in social media influencing or marketing. I'm actually an introvert, whether you believe that or not. Um, and accountants can be a little bit risk averse and some of them can be scared to network. Luckily, in my position as a COO of an asset management company, I was forced to network. So it brought me a little bit out of my shell and then I got to see the benefits of that. So let's jump back to LinkedIn. I couldn't find uh, any South African content, so I decided to share my own content so that at least the next person can find some South African content. Uh, and uh, I started slowly. I started by summarizing like uh, articles that I thought was of value. I'd summarize articles and then I'd share it about two or three times. Like, so summarize articles and post about two or three times a week. 
uh, or different summaries of different articles. And I noticed that people liked the summaries because then they didn't have to read the whole article. Uh, then I started adding my own thoughts to the summaries and I noticed that people started engaging a little bit more. And I got into good practice of sharing my thoughts, uh, such good practice that I stopped summarizing other people's articles and just started talking about my journey as a chartered accountant and as a professional in South Africa. I talked about things I did wrong, things I learned in my career, things I wish I did differently. And I noticed that more and more people started to resonate with it. Some happened to be going through similar experiences that I was talking about. So me sharing these stories uh, helped them uh, handle the situation potentially better. So I started in early 2019 uh, and in about August and posting two, you know, three, times a day, three times a week and I was trying to get a little bit more. Then in August 2019, someone put out a challenge on LinkedIn, say, let's post every day. So I was like, OK, I mean, what do I have to lose, right? So I took up the challenge and it was, it was very interesting. I think at one, at one point I was posting twice a day. I'm probably one of the people in South Africa who post the most uh, on LinkedIn at least. And I don't necessarily have any data to support that assumption, but uh, I don't see anyone who posts a lot. And a lot of people have said that, that I'm, I'm the one that they see the most. So that's quite interesting. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever have listened to Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V. He said you should post 100 times a day. Now, listen, I'm not asking you to post 100 times a day, but I will say um, if you're looking for inspiration or business ideas or things like that, listening to his podcast or watching his videos on LinkedIn, whether it's Instagram or YouTube, it's very inspiring and it's practical. So uh, if you want to learn about new things, widen your mind a little bit, search for Gary Vaynerchuk. He's not difficult to find, trust me. Um, it, 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 really, it really helped me just listening to his, because when you, 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 your mind starts thinking differently when, you, when, you, when you're around people who talk differently. So that helped me quite a bit. And for the last year, uh, I've also been hosting a weekly LinkedIn live show every Wednesday at 5 p.m. where I interview experienced South Africans in accounting and, and even outside the accounting field. So they share the experiences with us so that you can learn from their mistakes. Uh, it's also available on YouTube and the podcast. And the last week I actually interviewed uh, Tabiso Mpahlele and he's a data scientist. So every week is somebody different. Every week is, a, is, a, is, a, is an opportunity to learn something different. Now let's go back to like, what are the benefits of posting on LinkedIn? So for me, it's been huge. It's changed my career and probably my life forever. And I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be talking to today, today if it wasn't for me posting on LinkedIn. Because that's the only that's how that's how Dida got to know me. That's how people generally get to know me. Um, I've gotten promotions because of it. I've gotten salary increases because of it. I've gotten opportunities from sources that uh, that through making connections on LinkedIn, people bring up some people brought opportunities to me. I was like, okay, and I wouldn't have that, that those opportunities wouldn't have been available to me if I wasn't so active on LinkedIn. I've received job opportunities and job offers because people see me every day on LinkedIn. One, one person told me always, you're the first person I see every morning <laughs> when I switch on my phone, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Um, so growing my network has been the biggest thing. Networking is how opportunity, yes, you need to work hard, but if you don't network, uh, hard work is one, one link and uh, one side of the coin and networking is the other side of the coin. Otherwise, you're losing out, you're losing out on a lot of opportunities. So as I mentioned, uh, coming, from, coming from a disadvantaged community, nobody teaches you about networking. Uh, like white people have been networking forever. The rest of us are, are playing catch up. The sooner you learn, the better. So some of you might ask, uh, okay, ways, how do you post every day? It seems a lot. The answer is that I don't post every day. I've set up a process that works for me. So I sit down every two weeks and I schedule my posts using it's two programs on, 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 on the internet. One is called Buffer and one is called Bootsuite. So um, in a week, I don't do any posting. I just respond to comments. I schedule all my posts like uh, once for uh, in bulk and then it automatically posts uh, posts for me in the week at specific times. And uh, the free, and I'm using free versions. I'm not paying for anything. The free version of Buffer allows you to schedule 10 posts and the free version of Hootsuite allows you to schedule five posts. So for me, that's enough. I, I mean, I don't need to pay for anything if, if uh, the free version is giving me what I need. And 
uh, that reduces the barrier to entry for you as well. So don't say that there's nothing available to me. There's some, there's, if you look far enough, there's things that you can use. Other questions that people ask is, how do I get, how do I get ideas uh, to post? So I don't sit down like, okay, I'm going to have an idea session and pull out ideas. Uh, I don't do that because that can be very frustrating, especially if you're not. Sometimes you're just in a, um, like ideas just flow and sometimes it's some, some days you just have there's nothing coming. So trying to sit and force it is never going to, uh, never going to work. Look, you also need to find something that works for you, but this is what I do, right? So ideas come to me at random times. Sometimes it's, it's something I experienced at work. Sometimes it's, I remember something that happened to me at work or I remember something that happened to me and how I, uh, and then I just story tell it. Uh, or so, sometimes I just get an idea. As soon as that happens, uh, I, I, even if it's a rough drop, not the full idea, I put it down on my phone. So notepad, type it down. Um, and then every two weeks or so, I go back to those notes that I made and I schedule them on, 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 on Hootsuite or Buffer, as I mentioned. Um, and then they shake and they come out every day. So my main advice to you is just start posting about things you are interested in. You don't need, don't wait to be an expert to start posting. Right. You can talk, you can post about the journey of becoming an expert. So if you talk about it often, about a topic often, even if you just ask questions, people start thinking, listen, she is asking all the questions. She's been asking all the questions about this topic for the last six months. By now she must know the answer. She surely knows more than me. So if I need any questions, I'm going to ask her because that's the person I know and I know she's talking about. My question to you is what have you got to lose by posting? Think about that. What have you got to lose? I'll let you ponder. Because the answer is nothing. The only reason you don't want to start is the fear of judgment of others. That's why you don't want to start. And some people will judge, but people judge because people can't understand uh, when others do things that are outside of the ordinary or outside of normal. That doesn't make, if somebody's doing something outside of ordinary, it doesn't mean they're wrong. It's just outside of ordinary. And after a while, they stop judging because then they realize that you're actually succeeding. But it's too late. You've already got, but if you stopped, you are not growing because of fear of other people's judgment and then you're not going to grow. If you want to achieve something out of the ordinary, you can't do the ordinary. You need to do something different. So coming towards the end of this little talk, I want to leave you with a few things. If you want something bad enough, trying something once or trying twice or even five times and then giving up is not enough. Because then I'm gonna start questioning whether you really want it badly enough. You keep on trying, you keep on trying. Uh, something else that I also want you to think about is um, get a mentor. So I didn't have one until much later. I actually use Gary Vaynerchuk as my mentor because I listen to him quite often. Um, if I had one earlier, I might have made progress quicker because uh, chatting to mentors helps you learn from their mistakes. One also big advice that I would tell everyone is try different things. Learn what you enjoy and go with that. So you might think, this is a job that makes the most money. But that doesn't mean you're going to enjoy that job. Money is important, but if you're not enjoying it, money is not actually worth it. Like I've left jobs, I was earning a lot of money, but I wasn't like, it was stressful. Mm -hmm. um, it's my, my, you might think, yes, the first month salary might be cool, <laughs> and the second month salary might be cool. <laughs> by, by the sixth month, you're like, uh, I can't, like, yeah, you need to enjoy. And remember when you, Okay, you guys are in varsity now, so you don't necessarily experience. But if you're going to work, if you spend nine, eight, nine hours at a place, you want to do something that you enjoy. Okay, articles is a little bit different. You might not enjoy everything in articles, but think about it now or you start looking for things that you enjoy now. If you want, if you're going for nine, if working somewhere nine, you spend most of your time at work. You don't want to be miserable. Rather, like I'm enjoying what I'm doing, so it, it can it can be fun. Or like the things that I do on LinkedIn is things I enjoy. So I do them after hours. I do them on a Saturday, but I'm enjoying it. So I don't care that I'm going into my free time because it's things that I enjoy. So it gives me energy. So I'm not too worried. Um, the other thing that I want to, to, to tell you is to have good role models. 
So I've got a few. Um, one of my role models is Andile Kumalo. I don't know if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've heard of him. I'm sure you have. But he's a chartered accountant who's also a brilliant entrepreneur. Yes, uh, he's Kumalo doing, and Co. Yes. I mean, mm. Kumalo and Co. used to... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they still own Power FM, but he used to own Power they FM. They do. Or yes, with MSG. Power FM. Mm. And it's, I mean, he's got his fingers in a few pots. That, uh, that mm. man, like, so he's one of my role models. I look up to him. And another is uh, Gugu, uh, Gugu Dingan. She's a chartered accountant who, at 28, she became a board member of the listed company that I used to work for. And I was like, what, how old was I? 26 <laughs> at the time. Okay, she was 32 by the time I started Brussels. I was like, I'm 26. She became a board member at 28. So that was like, mm. I was like, wow. <laughs> Some pressure. It's, 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 well, pressure, but it's, it's inspiring. You know what I mean? So, um, I have someone to look. I have someone, something to to look towards because otherwise, if if you don't have anything to look towards, what are you what are you going after? And and I suppose the last thing that I want to mention is when you succeed, and I know you will succeed. So that's to me is not not the question. When you succeed, make sure you give back. It doesn't have to be money. Give your knowledge, share your experiences, and that's how you pull people out. That's how you that's how you grow people. Because look, in this country, um, inequality is a problem. Job creation is a problem. The only way to pull, and if you, every every one person that you pull out of poverty pulls a family with them. Mm-hmm. It's not just that one person. So you making a difference to one person makes a difference to five, maybe even more with uh, like, like some people are supporting a lot more than five or they're supporting the rest of their family. So make sure you give back when you succeed. Okay. Wow, man, uh, um, this is this is this is really profound. I will not lie to you. You you said a lot of very important things, and and I think we are going to drop in our questions when we have them. The comment box is definitely open, guys, and you can definitely unmute yourself. But there's this one that you mentioned, and I think you you mentioned it to me when I when I reached out to you, and you will remember this when I was wanting to transfer my articles to go to another firm, and I I mentioned some facts about the reasons why I want to leave, and you said happiness over money, and and you mentioned that even today. And, and I, I will not lie to you, oftentimes when, when you share your stuff on social media, particularly LinkedIn, we get that sense that I'm enjoying this, I'm doing this. And I think that's something you said when you were speaking with Shinaz Suleiman that I give energy to the things that give me energy. And, and, and we can see that. Now, I, I, this one is a, is, is a rather personal question about Gary, your, 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 your I don't want to call it activism, but you, you, you really love the man. You really love his work. I, and I, I first heard this when you were having a conversation with Richard uh, Bezaydenut. And you, 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 you said Gary is your, your great man. You, you love his work. How do you cope? I tried to follow that guy, but he swears a lot. He swears a lot for no reason, like for no reason. How do you sit there as a chartered accountant? You're trying to get inspiration about your career growth, your business investments, entrepreneurship. You sit and listen to Gary. And for some reason, he just F's up. He just B's up. He just uses all of those words. So, so remember, like I said, I went to school on the, on the Cape Flat. Swearing is not an issue for me. <laughs> but uh, OK, so I, I hear your, question, your answer. So that uh, that. That's the one person that works for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily saying that you have to listen to him, but you can, right. I mean, there's lots, there's, um, what's, what's the, uh, there, there's the guy that, that wrote uh, Four Hour Work Week. There's, 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 there's quite a few, I can't get to all the names now, but mm-hmm. find someone who resonates with you. So right, Gary right. resonates with me. If he doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. Find someone else who resonates with you that motivates you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's even, but Gary's even got a channel that, that, that where they beep out the swear words. <laughs> if, you, if it's really a problem for you, you can do that. But I mean, <laughs> find someone, whether it's Richard Brand, find someone who's putting out content. And the, the thing about that I enjoy about Gary is he's got, he puts out so much content that there's something to listen to almost every day. Right. You know, and, right. and sometimes you need, I mean, we're not, oh, we're not motivated every day, but we still need to get stuff done. So I like to listen to, I listen to him. I've, I've started listening to other people as well because I listen to everything. There's nothing left to listen to. Um, but yeah, find people that that help you to grow from to move from where you are to to go to the next level. And the next level might not necessarily be okay. I'm a financial accountant. I want to be a financial manager. And then I want to be a CFO. You might not actually enjoy being a CFO. What do mm-hmm. you enjoy? You might want to say actually I want to be. Uh, 
I want to be in. I want to be in an entrepreneur. Or I want to be in. I like. I like sneakers. Not me, but as an example, I, I like sneakers. Right. So I actually want to be involved in a company that sells sneakers because I enjoy that. Or I like sports. Um, I, I actually know someone who is the, the financial manager um, or, or he works at, at Kaiser Chiefs. So, so I mean, you marry, yes. you're marrying your, your love for sport with, with your job. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be, but this is an example. I mean, that's, right, the nice, right. that's, that's the beautiful thing about being a chartered accountant is every single company needs it. Every single company needs it. So you can marry, like, go, go to the thing that you're interested in. If you enjoy, Lord knows what, what you enjoy, but if, if you like sport or you like this or something, something you find very interesting, go to the, the, start engaging with that company and see whether they need accountants or they need a chartered right. accountant. And you don't have to do, like, um, who, uh, and I talk about it a lot. I don't know if she's still there, but the CEO or the former CEO of Woodward South Africa, her name is Ida Ryland. Mm-hmm. She's a chartered accountant. Also, I think she's from the Cape Flats, but she is a chartered accountant. You know what her position was before CEO of Woodward's? No. Her position was head of HR at Woodward's. Mm-hmm. Now, you tell me, she's a chartered accountant. She's the head of HR. If you're the head of HR, you don't see... Profit and loss. You don't see balance sheets. <laughs> don't yeah. see now. You head of HR, mm. but she's a chartered accountant. She, she she has the skill that people put her into the head, as the head of HR, and then she moved from the head of HR to the CEO position. Right. You don't have right. to. You might not want to do uh, monthly reporting every month. You don't have to. You can go right. to what you enjoy. Right, right. That's that's absolutely true, man. And I think you mentioned this this one other prominent figure that is a stamp of what you're saying, Andile, Andile Kumalo. His 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 immense work in the media and broadcasting industry is is I don't know. It's it's quite commendable. You look at him and you're like, I don't believe this is a chartered accountant. The chain of radio and television. He's on Kahi, so he's on MSG Africa, he's on Power FM. He he does a lot of work that wouldn't necessarily be like associated with chartered accountants, which basically means that we're sitting here and we are the next generation of chartered accountants, and we are worried that I am struggling with accounting, I am struggling with auditing, I'm struggling with financial management or costing, I am struggling with tax. Am I going to be binded to do this? these things for the rest of my life? Am I really going to live this much of a miserable life? Hell no. That's what um, OIS is saying today, that we can spread our wings and do as much as we can. And I think we've seen so many prominent accountants doing the work and, and pushing out there. One other thing that 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 I would really like you to emphasize um, before we throw it to, to Usi, because she has a question. The, you mentioned that <clears throat> we, we don't necessarily, when we're starting out on LinkedIn, right? Dr- dragging it back to LinkedIn for leaders. <clears throat> you mentioned that I tap onto LinkedIn. I don't necessarily need to want to 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 be an expert in, in a particular field. I don't necessarily need to, for some reason now, because I'm in this professional space, I want to talk numbers or I want to talk these big words because there are professionals around me. How do I... How do I ensure that I'm not unprofessional in as much as I am doing my love, in as much as I am chasing my passion, in as much as I am vocalizing my 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 words out there? I'm trying to put myself out on LinkedIn to 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 learn, to get my niche, to find my niche, to find my, my passion. What is it exactly that I can do my activism on LinkedIn? How do I still maintain that professionalism? Because I'm talking to who is a chartered accountant. I'm talking to somebody else who's an engineer. I'm talking to someone else who's a medical doctor doctor or an HR person or, or whoever, how do I maintain that professionalism? Yeah, well, don't swear. Um, you don't have to be. So that's, people worry about... I, I saw, sorry for that. I actually so saw, I actually saw Gary's LinkedIn. He does not swear. So, not swear so I agree with you on that. <laughs> so, look, people have this fallacy about being professional or this fallacy about you need to sound professional or you need to have an accent that sounds professional, or there's an ex- there's an accent associated with sounding smart. Like, I don't have that accent that sounds smart. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I definitely don't. But no. people don't connect with people who sound smart. People connect with people who are genuine and people that add value. Um, you don't have to, don't change the person you are to try and fit in with other people. Be you, be your person. People resonate. And if you are fake, people are going to figure that out. So you have to be honest, right? You have to be honest. Don't worry. And and 
don't expect, okay, I'm going to post today, I'm going to have a thousand followers tomorrow, or my views are going to be, it's a, it's a long-term game. Right. Like I talked about starting in 2019, it's 2021 now. I wasn't doing any interviews in 2019. Mm. Nobody was talking to me in this situation. It, you put in the work slowly, surely, and you build. And that's what life also, you put in the work slowly. You can't, you don't go from zero to 100 in, in a month or in six months. These things take time. Um, and every time you just see like another door opens or the, um, like I started with like a little bit of followers. Last year, it really ramped up. It went from like six to 10. And uh, this year it's like at 17. So it's crazy. But it's from just being consistent every day. You're not going to, People want to uh, like have every post must be a viral post. You don't mm. have to have every post be a viral post, even if it's just once a month. You just need to put in the work, and um, you start. Okay, this is a, a, how much I get every day. This is. Don't worry about you, you. Your main aim is not about how many views you get. Your main aim is am I adding value? People will, will right. come back to you if you add value. As long as you're teaching someone or adding value, that's the most important thing. Don't worry about I need to be in a suit or a tie. Some people put out posts about the the children, uh, or like not not every day, but I mean, like you don't have to be perfect. Like sometimes I put a running right. post on on, right, weekend, right. on the weekend because it's you. I mean, yes, I talk like this to you now, but when you're sitting with your friends, you don't talk like this. Like you, you you're more casual. So people want to people want to resonate with people. If you are real, people will resonate with you. Right, right, right. I mean, you spoke on 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 viral posts, and I'm I'm questioning. I'm I'm asking myself, what is a viral post after all? So yeah, uh, Asibu, you have a question there. Let me um let me just answer that question quickly on viral posts. Okay. People, uh, and then I'll take serious question. So, uh, and I heard somebody talk about this, and I live by it. A viral post for someone is different than a viral post for someone else. Absolutely. A viral post is just ten mm. x of your normal post. So if right. you normally get two hundred views. And you get 2,000 views, that's a viral post for you. Mm. Think about that. That's a, mm -hmm. just it just makes your normal. If your normal is 10, 20 views and you get 200, that's a viral post for you. Yes, somebody else might get 2 million views. Good luck to them. But you're not right. competing with somebody else. You're competing with who you were yesterday. Oh, man. Remember that's, that. That's big. Mm, mm. Mm. And I think I think right now I, I'm sorry for delaying Sibu's question. I'm not I'm not going to ask a follow up question. I think right now we're learning a lot more than just about LinkedIn. I think these are principles of life in general, working towards bettering myself, working towards being better than I was before, and not to the next person. Uh, we we're not working towards being better than the next person, but 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 the person that I was before. Um, Sibu, I'm and truly sorry. Please just, please sorry, do. Lost, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it earlier, and, and I lost the thread, and I needed to remember. Um, right. You mentioned it earlier about I have to do accounting. Qualifying as a CA is a, is, is not the end. Mm -hmm. It's a ticket to the game. Right, right. Once right. you qualify, then you can play the game. You're invited now. <laughs> then you play the game, and how right. you play the game is important. So you're not done learning. Now mm. you, you you start learning about things that you're interested in. Now, you, okay, now you're interested in sneakers. So now you do this. Now you can do this. And it, because you're coming in as a chartered accountant, so they need to pay you as a chartered accountant. But now you have a ticket to the game. It's not the mm. end. It's the start of the game. Mm. But it's over to you. Mm. Last okay. one. Last one on my side. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> I see that um, we have uh, two vocal people um, in our meeting. And I'm happy to witness that um i think from my side it's not necessarily a question um i think the reason we, we we decided to have this session um was to really emphasize the impact of linkedin um as a varsity student going into the working world um recruiters are there they want to see your profile they want to see whether you know you are a person that is you are who you say you are and sometimes um i i i think it was to emphasize that basics come back try to have um maybe a profile out there put your education there so i think what are some of the things that you would advise um from the basic perspective in terms of someone having their linkedin for example um their profile picture they are they are skills sometimes yeah even the skills yeah. that you put there like what are the important things that um as a beginner one needs to have that will attract recruiters to 
um, to seeing um, their profile and noticing them? Okay, that's a great question. So the first uh, first answer is don't just copy your CV and put it and and put it downward forward. That's because <laughs> okay. your CV is a little bit long. You, you, yeah. you, need, you need to catch people. So this is your your job title. This is what you do. Like nice summaries of. It, it, and there's, I can also share, there's, there's lots of free templates online on how to um, how to optimize your CV, uh, your, your your LinkedIn profile. I can, uh, okay. I, I can't search for it now, but um, if, if he that chatters to me afterwards, I can send him the link or send it to him and you okay. can always share it at the, at the later stage. Um, profile photo, don't put a photo of your graduation photo. Really? So, so as soon as I see that, I know I'm talking to a youngster. You know what okay. I mean? Because uh, you also, it's, it's, your pro, your pro, it doesn't have to be perfect, like with the best background, but like don't put your, of yourself at the wedding or don't put a picture okay. of yourself with, you can see someone's <laughs> hand is here because they're standing, it was the wedding photo and don't do that. Like just to have yourself. I someone. <laughs> yes, that you cropped someone. Yes, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, um, even if it's just with a plain background with a normal cell phone photo, with you, you, yeah, yeah. Self, it's self is fine right, if, if you right. start out. The self is fine as long as it can, I mean, you don't have to wear a suit and a tie. Like, I think I've got a shirt on. Don't wear a t shirt, that's weird. Um, <laughs> but uh, especially, of course, remember, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's about who you are, right? So it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, unless you're really trying to stand out. And then have something on the banner. Like, I'm not going to, uh, in the template, it will tell you, tell you what, but. If you have nothing, it looks boring. So it doesn't look like you like you put any effort into it. Have something on the band, whether it's a fancy quote or whatever you feel, something that resonates you. Don't think about it too much. Just have something there um, that talks about you. It can be another photo, or it can be like initially I had I had a I had a quote of Mandela for like a while uh, until I started updating it. Remember, you don't have to you don't go from zero to hundred. Start small. Start small. The profile picture. Um, if you've got any like this, like. LinkedIn courses that you did, you can put that on. There's free, a lot of free online courses. You can put that on. Remember, you, you guys are going into articles now, right? They need article clerks, so it's not as much of an issue for you to have the perfect LinkedIn profile now. It's more when you get to second and third year when you are going to your next step because you don't have much work experience. Um, uh, there's not that much recruiter. Yes, there's company recruiters. Most of you uh, are, are going to apply for auditing firms. So it's generally, the, I mean, you don't really stand stand out that much. Like because remember, just because you've got great results at 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 uh, varsity doesn't mean you're going to be good at work and vice versa. I know people who are like top in board one, and they're not that great at working, or they really got good results, but they don't work well with people. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get great results at, at, at university, but like I said, you just need to get enough to pass. You just need to, I mean, you, you have to work your, your socks off even if it's just to pass. But I mean, that doesn't mean you're any, you, you're any worse than someone who's got great results. You might actually be a brilliant, brilliant at dealing with people or brilliant at something else that's not like specifically studying. So don't worry about that. There's, there's lots of other tricks, but uh, that, that for now, I think that for now covers it. Okay. Okay. No, I like that. Um, I think I fall victim of a bad profile picture, but <laughs> <laughs> my mentor said I need to check myself before I um I come to this meeting. But <laughs> I still need some time. Okay. I see a comment from Dima. Uh, he says that also there are small businesses that are helping young professionals to create their profiles on LinkedIn. Okay. I think this is this would help especially when the ones don't know where to start okay thank you Nima for that um, maybe you can also share the names of those small businesses that you know of to kind of assist others but I, I like I like the I like the response and from what you were saying at the beginning you were telling us how LinkedIn helped you in your career and I think it's very like important to just emphasize that because um, you know sometimes social media presence is sort of needed even though um we do need to facilitate how we use it and i think um one of the questions that i was gonna ask is how do you then still uh, voice out your opinions and everything but 
also making sure that you don't like bring the career into disrepute or like break any ethics you know um yeah. in in, in yeah. the stuff that you say um are there certain boundaries that you're not supposed to cross um because the, you know our profession is very strict um so yeah i don't know if you can like give like okay. some sort of an advice to 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 um, us just before I, I i do that i also just want to uh, take on one more i want to mention one more thing that i mentioned that i didn't mention in my talk i talked a lot about um posting and some of you might still be a little bit nervous to do that and which i understand and if you don't want to do that or if you don't if you, if you think that's too high of a bar to start you can also try start commenting on other people's posts so engaging engaging with other people's posts so people again i go back to like if you're interested in sneakers you follow all the people that are uh, talking about sneakers uh, and you comment on that so if you're interested in investments follow people who, who talk about who talk about investments and you ask questions you don't have any need to have the answers just ask questions engage because then you build building if you ask the same person like questions every time they post they're like who's that girl she keeps uh, posting on my or who's that guy and mm. after a while that's how you start the relationships as well it's you don't have to always be uh, you don't always have to put out like new 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 content that so that's just one idea i wanted to get out and then your answer on uh, on uh with with the ethics of our professional obviously you need to abide by those ethics but so you need to try and withdraw the emotion from the post so if something just happened to you and you're angry don't post about it uh because uh, and like remove the the anger from the post remove the the people from the post so if there's a lesson then put that lesson in and tell the story without the without the anger and put the lesson in what i like to do is uh, the way i like to word my post even if something happened to me is what did i learn and you know, what did i do wrong that i can fix so i'm not saying that my manager is terrible i'm saying how what did i do because you can only control yourself you can't control right. your manager if you've got a crappy manager you've got a crappy manager yeah. and you can try and you can engage but i mean it's uh, you 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 still got control that you am i working am i working in the right place or not you've got you've got more control than you realize um obviously you, know, you watch your language but be you be you talk talk like you talk don't try and use high polluted language just talk the way you the, the way you need to talk um you not don't try and do like exposés where you accusing people of things obviously if you do things like that you are going to get in trouble but yeah. if you share your experience it's just your experience it's the truth it happened to you mm. it's not it's not uh, it's not making anyone look bad it's your experience uh, and obviously if you're still working with a person don't be too specific about that because then people will know um So I talk about things that happened five years ago, or do we, or or if I'm talking about something that happened last week, I get very general in the way that I speak about it. So, uh, I, so that the person doesn't think that I'm because you don't. Your aim is not to point to to point fingers. Your aim is to help somebody reading your post to learn. Yeah. So always remember, go back to what is the aim of my post. If you want to vent, LinkedIn is not the place. Go to Twitter <laughs> if you need to, <laughs> but LinkedIn is not the place to vent. Right. Uh, that that will destroy your brand very quickly. Mm. Right, right. Career limiting moves, eh? Uh, Career yeah. limiting moves. No, I like I like what you said about detaching your emotion from your post because we we tend to do that a lot. I think for me, that's what has made me um, not post a lot on LinkedIn because I'm a very emotional person. So in a space where um, like I need to assess the type of person that I am. on whatsapp at least is the people that are close to me um so it's fine my emotions can be there but in a, in another platform i do hold back but i i am taking these lessons for myself um, i don't know if others in the meeting are also but to just try to uh, don't attach your emotions to if you're feeling a type of way just wait or 
try to find a lesson and post that lesson. I, I, I thank you for that very and, much. And also, like, it comes with practice. Eh? So you're not going to give the best from the start. So if you're not sure, you can either, like, type it out on, like, not on LinkedIn somewhere else and then come back to it after 10 minutes or share it to someone you trust and say, does this come across as me being trying to attack anyone or yeah. does it come across like the, the lesson is the lesson coming across and they'll give you feedback you know they, yeah. they, and after you do that a few times you'll start to say okay this is uh, this is where i go wrong this is, so you don't expect to be perfect but but use your friends use your you use the people that you work with uh, and the people that you trust to help you mm-hmm. Wow. And, and as I said, we, we're not just learning about LinkedIn here. This this thing that Sibu has just emphasized the, the and, and that you've just emphasized on as well, why is that we, we, we our emotions, our emotions are very important that we, we, we wait a moment and, and, and really ponder on our emotions generally and, and not just on LinkedIn or social media. Um, I think we wrapping we wrapping this conversation up. Um, the last thing I really would like you to to talk on why, of course, if there are no questions on the floor, it's definitely open, guys. You can unmute yourself or you can drop on the on the comments even after we we we've, we've closed this this conversation. The one last thing which I saw you taking advantage of, and I will not lie to you, I I followed footsteps and I I got myself a certificate as well. Um, uh, Google Digital Skills for Africa. As well as the the um, the the quizzes that are the professional quizzes that are on LinkedIn, can you talk to us about about those? Uh, not specifically. Um, well, of course, if, if you can talk on those specifically, you can. Um, but what are where where what can we do like to optimize our our, our social our social media or our internet presence, our, our LinkedIn outside of getting these academic qualifications? We know it's difficult to sit and, and get a qualification for three years. It's difficult to sit and get the CTA, but but LinkedIn people many people often don't know that there are quizzes that that add badges on your LinkedIn and they attract recruiters. There there is free um, Google Digital Skills for Africa that you can get into and, and go through the process and get a certificate that, that can be useful. Um, would, you, would you like to talk on that sure. um, before we, we wrap this up? Sure. So a couple of things. So I haven't done too many of the LinkedIn courses. I've done the Google Skills for Africa. The reason I did that is because as somebody who posts on LinkedIn, I'm now interested in digital marketing. And that right. also, and, and I'm interested in sales. So that's helped me a lot in widening and, or, or making me. So sometimes people like accountants can think like this. But you need to think like this, or like if you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to think outside the box, you need to think like this, you need to think wide. And that, so that helps me think a little bit differently. Um, and 100% what you mean is, I after I did my board exam, I was like, I'm not going to study another exam again. That's just too stressful. <laughs> I don't know, like so a lot of people have done MBAs and CFAs, and I was like, Ooh, if you do what you want to do, it, that's great. But I, 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 that was a lot for me. So I didn't really want to study anything, but there's a lot available online that will make you stand out. Like the Google, Steve, like something like that. If you're interested in coding, you can learn coding online. If you're an accountant, mm. if, you, if that's something you're interested in, like building products, if you're an accountant that can code, you immediately stand up, out about, about the people who can't code. So it's, it's called like T-skills, things that, that make you stand out. And you don't have to be the best coder. You just need to have an understand. You need to be dangerous enough to understand mm. what people mm. are talking about. So whether that's coding or, I mean, if you're interested in fashion and you have and you 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 do a little bit there's, there's lots of things um there's a there's, so there's a website called uh udemy and, and then what's the other one there's another one that that like courses are like 100 rand 150 and mm. things that you're interested in i'm trying to get you the name right now but i i, I can't get you the name right now but it's, it's, it's similar to udemy um where the courses are very cheap if mm-hmm. you want to learn or or if you if you just take out the trial on linkedin and then you can do a lot of these courses because it's like a month trial. And if you, I mean, if you've got time, don't take it out when you're writing exams. Like right. uh, when you have free time during your holidays, do it then. And, and then you can learn. Or during maybe that time after you're done with, with, your, with your exams at the end of the year and you've got, because I know in university students, you've got nice long holidays, unlike the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> use that time. Use that time valuably. Uh, valuably. You, you will stand out. You will stand out. 
Wow. Man, thank you so much. I think we, we truly appreciate you spending your time to, to have these conversations with us. These are normally conversations that we wouldn't normally have. Uh, a lot of people would think that I, I know these things. They are there. I, I know they are there and I wouldn't really necessarily want to hear someone talk about them. Or I, I, I don't even know that these things 